Plant Magic by Desiree Nielsen. That's the cookbook that we're reviewing today, so grab a mug of your favorite beverage and join me for today's Nutrition Coffee Chat. Hmm. And while you're at it, click the subscription button below and the little notification bell so that you get everything you need to create healthy eating habits that stick. Ha, huh, well in the name of full transparency, I want to let you know that the author Desiree Nielsen and I are both uh, fellow dietitians here in British Columbia, Canada, and we have known each other for many years. And so when I saw her announce that she was working on a new cookbook, I got online and ordered myself, pre-ordered myself a copy. Uh, to be really clear though, that this is not a sponsored post. I used my own money to purchase this cookbook and made my own decision to give it a review for you here. But I've reviewed her past cookbooks and people appreciated that and I enjoyed them so I jumped at the opportunity to bring back the cookbook reviews here with reviewing Desiree's cookbook. And so I've got a few of, of her, uh, the other reviews of her cookbooks here. I'll link those in the description box below. And yeah, let's dive into reviewing this cookbook here. Uh, it is a plant uh, it's called Plant Magic, a celebration of plant-based cooking for everyone. So it is a vegan cookbook, 100% plant-based, all of the recipes in here. And let's jump into the table of contents. Uh, so it has uh, introduction, how to create plant magic, morning things, so other words, breakfast ideas, dressed up veg, salads you'll crave, nourishing soups and stews, noodle party, stuff on bread, just one pot or pan, things for sharing and snacking, really good sweets, everyday tonics and potions, staples that make everything better, but I can't eat that, helpful swaps to make your own magic, a few of my favorite things. So she's organized it in a really different and quite playful way. And yes, all people always want to know, are there photos? And yes, pretty much every recipe here, almost every recipe has beautiful, beautiful photos for them. Uh, really great photography and really want, makes you, really whets your appetite, makes you want to try all these different beautiful recipes. And speaking of that, you can see I've cooked up a storm and <laughs> tried many, many recipes in order to inform uh, my review. And so let's dive in here. Uh, so the first recipe that I made, uh, again, I'm a huge vegetable lover. You know that if you've been following me for a while. And I love how she's done these creative ways of uh, celebrating plants and particular vegetables. Um, so the first one is sumac roasted eggplant with maple tahini drizzle. Delicious. And I always love a uh, different eggplant recipe. I love eggplant. Eggplant, I feel, is a really delicious vegetable. But I always say that eggplant isn't a beginner vegetable. It's not one that if you don't know how to cook it, mm, you're not going <laughs> to do very well. And so I always recommend for people who are new to cooking eggplant to try some recipe, follow some recipes uh, to learn how to cook eggplant because it is such a beautiful ingredient, but only when it's handled well. And this is an example of it being handled well. <laughs> okay, next recipe here, braised fennel and lentils. Ah, again, an undersung vegetable, fennel. Often people don't know what the heck it is, what do you do with it, and so I love it. Same with lentils. I get a lot of requests from clients, from you folks here. How, you've heard that beans, lentils, these things are so healthy for us, but don't know what the heck to do with it. So braised len, uh, fennel and lentils is a delicious something to do <laughs> with that vegetable and lentils. Uh, next recipe I tried is smashed potatoes with Bravas style paprika gravy. This is one of the very few recipes that doesn't have a photo here, uh, but I have spent time in Spain. I love papas, uh, Bravas, and so I wanted to try this recipe. And yes, really flavorful, very, very delicious gravy here for this recipe. Okay, moving on to salads. Uh, lentil, orange, and radicchio salad with mint. 
Oh my goodness, this is so up my taste buds alley. I love it and it, oh my goodness, the flavors are even brighter than those colors there. And it's a wonderful recipe for a salad that would be great all year round. Uh, these radicchio, oranges, mint, these ingredients, you can find them in beautiful quality all winter long when a lot of other vegetables are looking a little sad. So this bright, bold flavors, delicious full meal salad, which I love a full meal salad. Okay, getting into the next recipe, corn and coconut salad with cumin lime dressing. And this one tasted very similar to a recipe that I have in my own cookbook that includes black beans in there. And I saw the similarities when I was reading the description. And so I thought, oh, let me see how Desiree's compares to mine. And they're incredibly similar. And since I already liked that recipe and chose it for my own cookbook, of course, I like this one as well. Uh, and I also love this one again um, for how great a recipe this will be all year round when you're using frozen corn niblets and cherry tomatoes. So again, vegetables, when they're a little sad in the winter, this is a great bright salad and celebrates the vegetables that we have available to us all year round. Okay, next recipe here, brined rice salad with pomegranate and pistachio. Now this one I had to try because it really intrigued me. Uh, I, I love all of those ingredients. I love pickles, I love pomegranates, I love pistachios, but I really couldn't picture what they would taste like <laughs> all together there. So I was like, I have to try this because this is blowing my mind <laughs> here and uh, it is delicious. I would say that it's in the strangely good <laughs> category there. The flavors are a unique combination, but they're bold and uh, fascinating combination that just kept me eating and eating this recipe. Uh, so if you are someone who loves bold flavors and has found that when you've tried plant-based eating, eh, eh, it's pretty boring and flat, no way. This is an example of a recipe that uh, is plant-based and wow, powerful flavors. Okay, next recipe, broccoli salad with tahini ranch. Uh, I love a broccoli salad, particularly in the summertime. It's a great kind of potluck barbecue staple. So I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, and yeah, this broccoli salad is, I felt delicious. It's an improvement on that classic one. Uh, nice that it's a vegan option. Um, and however, calling it tahini ranch, mm, I didn't really get ranch vibes from the recipe, the salad dressing, but the salad dressing was delicious. So don't get me wrong, it's a delicious salad dressing. I love ranch dressing because I am not vegan myself. Uh, and so I thought I'd give that a try. Delicious salad dressing, but not hitting the ranch notes for, for me personally there. Okay, moving on. Paprika lentil stew delicious delicious uh, recipe and I will when the fall weather comes around again and I'm searching for stews and soups and warming dishes I will be making this again I I love uh, lentil and bean stews all winter long and I was excited to try a new one with a different flavor profile and this one hit everything that I was looking for so delicious okay next recipe is a stro mushroom stroganoff Oh my goodness, I am definitely a, a kid who was raised in the 80s in the Canadian suburbs, and so we ate mushroom stroganoff, which I'm sure is totally not authentic <laughs> to the real dish. But when I saw that here, it hit all those like comfort food vibes that I wanted to give it a try because, of course, uh, the kind of 80s casserole mushroom stoganoff is not vegan <laughs> and this hit all those umami mushroom notes that I was looking for from that comfort food so absolute hit and again next winter I will be making this again okay moving on to stuff on bread 
cumin lime black bean burgers and I did make the recipe for the pickled red onion. Uh, this one I made for the whole family, for the kiddos, because of course, hey, kiddos love burgers. And this was a huge, huge hit. Now, the kiddos in my life, uh, they are from a Peruvian culture background, and so many of these flavors are flavors that we've raised them uh, uh, to be familiar with. Avocado, red onion, cilantro, black beans. These are all things that they've been raised on. And so I thought how fun to put those Peruvian kind of classic ingredients that they are familiar with in a burger, which again, the kids, you know, huge hit burgers for them. And this one, oh my goodness, I'm gonna be making this over and over and over. This one is going in the repertoire because the kids loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Like I made a double batch of these burgers and there was, I think like one left. <laughs> they were loving this recipe. Uh, one of the kids even said, this is the most delicious burger I've ever had. I mean, high praise from a 12 year old. <laughs> and so yeah, huge fan of this. If you're wanting to uh, do veggie burgers, whether you're vegan or you aren't vegan, but you're wanting to eat more plant-based and you think burgers could be an approachable way to do it, hit this one up. Oh my goodness. Fantastic. Okay, next recipe is sweet and spicy lentil sloppy joes with pickle slaw. And again, kiddos, you know, sloppy joes, they are match made in heaven. And yes, this is a very approachable vegan dish. All the classic messiness of uh, a sloppy joe um, and the Putting the pickles in a slaw, oh, brilliant. I love a slaw, I love pickles, never thought to put them together, brilliant. The kiddos even wanted the slaw and the pickles on theirs, which always is a hit if you're getting kiddos to eat cabbage. <laughs> well done, and so yeah, love this recipe. This one will also be frequently in the repertoire. Okay, next recipe, soy curl chicken fajitas. And so, yeah, I'd never worked with soy curls before. Um, they were a little harder to find, but I did find some. Uh, although in this, I'm not sure if they were the exact same ones that uh, Desiree used in her cookbook. Um, because in her cookbook here, it says to soak the soy curls for 10 minutes. But in the product that I found, um, it said to soak the soy curls for 30 minutes. And so I followed the instructions on the package. And uh, it, the recipe turned out amazing. I loved the kind of chewy texture of the soy curls. And so I'll definitely be making this again because I do love a, a fajita. Um, and those are a hit in my household. So yeah, love that. But just if you are looking for soy curls, I would follow the directions on the package there, even if they differ from what's in the cookbook here. And, uh, and then final recipe, had to try something with a little bit of a dessert, and thin mint cookies is what I chose. I'm a huge fan of chocolate mint. It's one of my favorite flavor combinations, and so made some cookies for the household. They went down a hit. Uh, I did make one slight change with them in that I chose a milk chocolate uh, coating for the top rather than the dark chocolate, just because I know that that's more uh, enjoyed amongst the kiddos in my household. Uh, so, but with that change, the kiddos loved those cookies. They went down a hit. Um, they are, even with the milk chocolate coating that I did, they are a dark chocolate lover's uh, cookie. The, the amount of cocoa powder in there gives it that boom, strong chocolate flavor. And so definitely they're delicious if you like that, but if you really don't like a dark chocolate, this might be not for you. Okay, so that's the rundown of the recipes that I chose to make. There are many, many recipes that I do want to go back in and keep cooking from, and that's always a, a bonus with a cookbook. Sometimes when I'm you know, choosing them, there, you know, there's a few recipes that interest me, but the rest don't really. That is not the case here. There are many, many more recipes that I wanted to, that I wanted to make before this, uh, review here with you. I ran out of time. That was still 14 <laughs> different recipes there. So I will keep cooking from this. I'll keep dipping back into this cookbook as well as going back to some of those hits like the black bean burgers that I'm going to be adding to the repertoire very regularly. So in conclusion, 
do I recommend this cookbook? I think you're gonna <laughs> already know the answer to that, at least partially, that yes, I am a big fan of this cookbook, although I'm gonna disagree with the description on the front cover, because the description on the front cover, again, said a celebration of plant-based cooking for everyone. And it's the for everyone that hmm, I'm gonna disagree with here. Uh, the recipes in this cookbook are excellent if you're already comfortable in the kitchen. So if you're comfortable in the kitchen, this is, and you love bold flavors, you want to incorporate more plant-based eating, or you already are vegan, then this I highly, highly recommend. However, if you are a novice cook uh, and you're looking for like quick and easy 15 minute meals, give this one a pass. Uh, these, these recipes are a bit more involved, there's longer ingredient lists, and many of them do take a bit more time. Absolutely are worth it. <laughs> they are delicious, but I would say not necessarily a beginner-friendly cookbook here. So if you are like me in that first category, comfortable in the kitchen, looking for some bold flavors and incorporating more plant-based recipes, I highly recommend it. Head on down and purchase that to either support your local bookstore or if you buy your cookbooks or your books in general from Amazon, I do ask that you use the uh, link that I've provided in the description box below. Uh, when you do so, I earn a small commission uh, at no extra expense for you. And that's just a wonderful way to support uh, this channel. Are there other cookbooks that you'd like me to review in the future? Please share that in the comment box below. I'll be back next month with a new video and in the meantime enjoy healthy eating.